So this is new for me. Typically I don't make reaction videos. I mostly make videos to help people understand the possibilities and limitations of AI. But uh, this video here from Dropout showed such a fundamental misunderstanding of artificial intelligence that I thought it might make sense for me to do my first reaction video. And if it gives me a chance to mock Grant O'Brien, so much the better. If you want to learn more about who Grant is and understand the breaking news format, I have a couple of links to example videos on YouTube that are free. Warning, uh, in contrast to my normal videos, this is definitely not safe for work. For my five loyal viewers who don't know what breaking news is, it's a comedy show where the actors read off of a teleprompter, Ron Burgundy style. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy? Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? Without knowing beforehand what is going to be on there. And the challenge is not to smile or laugh while they're reading what's on the teleprompter. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Amy Vorpal. Amy Vorpal who? Amy Vorpal is an actress who absolutely cannot keep her shit together on breaking news. You can learn more about Amy Vorpal by searching <laughs> bing.com. So anyway, a recent episode of Breaking News on Dropout claimed to have a script written by an AI. This episode of Breaking News on Dropout is being written by artificial intelligence. Dropout TV uploaded all of the scripts and its episodes of Breaking News into a large language model and asked the model to write a script in the standard news format. Here we go. One gimmick the episode had was that the AI permuted the first and last names of the actors reading the script. Even if you go back to Ingram language models, 90s era technology, they would not have gotten that wrong. There are only so many words that follow Shaban in a dropout context, and it would get that right and say Thompson. I suppose that the only language model that would make this kind of mistake is one that was a probabilistic context-free grammar that had specific non-terminals for first and last names. Link in the description if you want to learn more about those language models and PCFGs. Another recurring gag was that the AI kept talking about Bing.com. You can learn more about Amy Vorpal by searching <laughs> Bing.com. Onshoring is a process to localize manufacturing. You can learn more about it by searching Bing.com. <laughs> didn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe it was a prescient joke about how Microsoft shenanigans were going to take over the board of OpenAI. If so, kudos for spotting that before the Thanksgiving Altman debacle. Uh, but I think it's more likely that it's just a reference to a 90s era uncool search engine. Although for reasons I don't quite understand, a more hipster reference would be to Alta Vista, RIP. I sure do miss its near operator. But the bigger thing about this is that computers and AIs are pretty bad at maintaining long-range coherency for something like a running gag. And this is a way to check if something is generated by an AI. So this is a sign that it wasn't generated by an AI. One tip that I tell my students to look for in spotting AI-generated content is to look for inconsistencies, like messing up a pronoun, referring to people by different names, or suddenly talking about a concept that's never been introduced thus far in the document or image. The same thing works in images, by the way. Look for an occluded door that doesn't make sense on either side of the person in front of the door, or for earrings that don't match. For all of his many, 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 many flaws, Grant O'Brien is an effective writer and can create callbacks in a script like this. An AI can't do that. In fact, the most AI thing about the script was plagiarism. There is a long segment that's just a verbatim quoting of Yeats' The Second Coming, skillfully done by Mark Trapp. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. And what rough beast its hour come round at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. And he knocked it out of the park. I think that this was meant as an allusion to the vague, ill-defined threat that AI poses to society. But it exemplifies one of the biggest threats of artificial intelligence that is real, intellectual property theft. And because Grant is a lazy writer, he just copy-pasted it and plopped it down. And artificial intelligence is lazy too. It's not creative. So having a large chunk 
of text copied verbatim from another author is apt and appropriate. It's what AI does. Uh, but where Grant is superior to an AI is that Grant chose to plagiarize something in the public domain. ChatGPT will plagiarize just about anything. But let's zoom out here for a second. Is an AI capable of generating something that looks like a breaking news script? Certainly. But is it going to be good? Probably not. It might be able to cobble together a good joke or two, but those jokes are, more likely than not, going to be stolen directly from some other source. But will it have an arc and callbacks like a script written by a human? Actress Meryl Streep has died at the age of 420. Blaze it. The restaurant opens at 420 o'clock. Blaze it. No, not with our current technology. And that's where I think that things like this script do us a disservice. And this isn't new. People have been enamored of technology and have faked it by using a human inside the box from the mechanical Turk that played against Napoleon to X.AI and Clara Lab. And those are real challenges that we as a research community need to overcome to even surpass the low, low bar of being a better writer than Grant O'Brien. So if you want to learn about those challenges for AI progress and want to provide a big gradient to the algorithm, press the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if there are things that I missed or got wrong, please leave a comment. It boosts engagement. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.